Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm privileged to welcome a very senior and well-recognized professional from, from Florida, USA, Mr. John Chapelier. John, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Ashutosh. I am... Um... I'm very excited to be here. I, I've looked at your website and all the different uh, people that you've interviewed over time. I, I feel um, excited and and um, uh, humbled to be in this in this group Thank of people that you've you. chosen. Very kind of you. Uh, John is an award-winning author. He's a consultant and a speaker. He's an author, and all of you know I'm very partial to authors. He's an author <laughs> of a book titled The Daily Six. He's an expert in individual and organizational wellness, a quintessential entrepreneur. He has started, built, run, and sold five companies. And he has received a presidential letter of commendation from President Reagan. John, what an amazing journey you seem to have had. Um, but before I get into individual and organizational wellness, tell me a little bit about your journey. Oh, wow. Um... Was that on this sheet? I don't know if you had this on. <laughs> it wasn't. That's my, a trick uh, question. My journey, it's a trick question. My journey um, is uh, like a lot of people, you know, you just kind of, you're moving along and you don't decide to, to hop out of the stream that you're in. You just mm -hmm. keep going. And um, I got out of college and then did graduate school. And then my father had a small business that he mm -hmm. had just started. And my intention was to go work for a large firm like you know we were discussing earlier and he said well could you please you know come and work with me i just bought this business and you've got all this i just spent all this money on your education mm -hmm. on your education please come work with me <laughs> and um uh, wasn't until later that i realized that was it was both a blessing and a huge mistake and mm -hmm. the the huge mistake in in family businesses is that there's a tremendous difference in working for a small company and working for a small family business um, because you have all the issues associated with entrepreneurial business but you also have all the baggage that comes along with with working with family um, and so what i finally realized after a couple of years of working with my father once you know i got the company struggle it was struggling it's about everything's running good everything's running fine was the fact that I was now, you know, I had been asked to come and join this company and I was trying to move the company forward mm -hmm. and I was not getting any support with that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I finally realized that my father was on the, the end of the arc of his career and I was at the Thank beginning you. of the arc of my mm -hmm. career. And so he's not interested in taking chances or taking out, you know, any kind of additional uh, debt so that so you could so you could build a, mm. into the future. Um, and it wasn't until that realization that I came, I decided that I would have to leave and start my own business. Mm. And um, so I did. And uh, it was one of those things where, you know, looking back on it, it was <laughs> my ignorance fabulous. is what propelled me to success. Oh, fabulous. Was, you know, took a second trust on the house and Fabulous. borrowed the money and took off. <laughs> and here you are. So uh, what what got you interested in individual and organizational wellness? And how do you define the term? Well, I, I think for me, organizational wellness is um, when everybody shares the same vision mm -hmm. uh, within the company. Uh, they understand it. They understand why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. They understand the, their own individual and team importance at, at in the organization. It's just not a sporadic group of individuals running around trying to accomplish goals. It's mm -hmm. they understand that what they do is important and and that what they do is valued. And that makes a huge difference in the level of productivity, turnover, and absenteeism in an organization. Mm, very interesting. And when you have worked with organizations <laughs> for their wellness, what are the kind of challenges you have faced? Well, a lot of it is uh, we get a lot of pushback from leadership because they feel as if they should have been doing this. And mm. so you, um, the, the, the key that I finally learned is that... Um, uh, it, especially in depends on if it's a small organization or a large organization mm, it, mm. it's but it, a lot of the times if it's not being particularly well attended to mm -hmm. um which is usually when i get a call um it, it has to do with either the quality of their hiring mm -hmm. or the quality of their training 
And so they're, if they are hiring correctly and poorly training, they end up with turnover. Mm -hmm. If they're hiring correctly, mm -hmm. well, I just said that, if they're hiring poorly, but they're trying to train it, they'll never get a person that's up to the level of productivity that you want. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the first thing I try and do is convince them that they need to evaluate training levels, training practices and hiring practices mm -hmm. so that we can get the right person in the right job, in the right seat. I mean, you were talking about reading books. I mean, this is sort of a... Um, good to great book. Uh, you know, he, he talks about making, putting people in the right seats, yep. not just on the same bus, but on the same bus on the right seat. So when everybody's moving forward together towards the same goals with the same values, then you begin to feel as if you're excited to go to work. When you're feeling excited to go to work, you mm. have a well organization that's healthy. Mm. Interesting. And what are the steps you follow uh, when you start working on some of these challenges well uh, uh, let me let me give you a story actually i just did a video on this mm -hmm. um, i call it slow down to speed up mm -hmm. and it's um i was noticing that um uh, when i was with a client i was out on the loading dock at the end of the day and the trucks are coming back in and they're opening the doors and the trucks are full of material rather than empty and um i i, I asked uh, why are you doing this and they mm -hmm. said well uh, because we have to pick up a lot of the mistakes from the orders that were picked the day before. Mm -hmm. And I had just had a request two days earlier from the, the head of operations and logistics that they mm -hmm. needed more trucks and more drivers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the reason they needed more trucks and more drivers is because the packers were moving too fast, mm -hmm. making too many mistakes. Okay. So the trucks and drivers was not the solution. It was slowing down the pickers and packers. Mm -hmm. So the mistakes stopped. As the mistakes stopped, the truck drivers could get the work done at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's it's a matter of you know taking a look and identifying the real problem. What yeah. is the real problem? A lot of times it's just like okay, we'll get six new trucks and hire six new drivers, and and then the problem will be fixed. Well, yeah, but it yeah. will only be fixed till those six trucks fill up with mm -hmm. mistakes. Um, the, the the other one is sort of be willing to ask questions from the people who work with you and mm -hmm. and for you mm -hmm. rather than always assume that you have all the answers. Mm -hmm. um, that's a level of, of ego and hubris that tends to go into being, a, especially being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. But there's a level of ego that's good, a level that's good, but too much can be fatal. So you have to be very attentive to, uh, I mean, most people aren't going to go into business for themselves, especially if they don't have a sense of a high, strong sense of self-confidence. Mm. But you have to remember that you're probably not the smartest, best person that's ever done this job. Mm. So asking questions, you know, how do you think we should do this, especially for people who are at the front of the line? Mm. If the people are doing the work, I ask people this in, in every consulting class, I go, do you agree that the people doing the work understand the work better than the people supervising the work? Mm. And everybody says, Absolutely. I said, well, Absolutely. Are you are you asking them how to do the work better? Yeah. Oh no, we didn't do that. We mm. we got with together with the managers and we created a new plan. It's like, why don't you get together with the people doing the work and come up with a new plan? Well said. Well and said. when that happens, mm. this is all tied back to this. I'm excited to go to work. Mm. The absenteeism going down, wellness going up, that kind mm. of thing. What a great response! Thank you. So, John, now let's move to your uh, second avatar as an entrepreneur. Right. I mean, you know, in your right in the beginning, you told me about uh, how you probably earned your entrepreneurial uh, spurs, so to speak, with your dad. But uh, yes. in an age of startups and entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurship, where one out of 10 uh, startups make it, you yes. have built and sold five businesses, which is yes. quite a record. So my first question to you is, what are some of the qualities that a startup entrepreneur should have? Well, um, I, I think be a little crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've, uh, you know, uh, and you can define crazy any way you'd like. I, I just sort of enthusiastic and and a, a sense of self belief. Yeah. Um, I was always sort of the kid in the class that got in trouble for talking too much or, yeah. or thinking outside the box or doing the kinds of things that other people weren't doing. And, mm -hmm. and that, I think, helps a lot with uh, with being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, because the downside of that, of course, is that most entrepreneurs don't come from a financial background. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
And so when you're one of the things that I learned uh, through one of the books that I read mm -hmm. uh, has to having to do with the entrepreneurial operating system or EOS. I don't know if you've ever yep. read that work traction and those other yep. books. But the, the thing that I wish I had known early on was to create the positions of the visionary, which would have been me mm -hmm. and the implementer, which would have been the person who actually works on a day to day basis, mm -hmm. implementing the vision. Mm -hmm. The difference in a in a um, general manager of a soccer team, let's say and the coach of the soccer team. Mm -hmm. One person creates the strategy, the other person implements the strategy. Correct. And, it, and it, that tends to not be the same person, but in an entrepreneurial business, the entrepreneur wants to take both of those tasks on mm -hmm. and they're distinctly different. Uh, so I think that that visionary implementer idea is really, really important. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I also would recommend is this idea of macro micro. And this is think of it as sort of, um, uh, close up and then a far shot and close up and far shot. And that is the way in which you need to look at your business. How right. is this truck getting this stuff? Or how mm -hmm. is this logistical systems working through the business, moving mm -hmm. things from where we are to where we should be? Um, I was working in a hospital in the Middle East. And one of the problems that we ran into was uh, that the people working in the warehousing system and, and through their uh, logistics mm -hmm. didn't think about themselves as working in a hospital. They thought about themselves as working in a warehouse. Right. So they were not handling boxes in the way in which you would hand medical equipment. They were handling boxes the way the mm -hmm. warehouse people handle boxes, yeah. throwing them around, tossing them to each other, throwing mm -hmm. them up on shelves. And what was happening was a tremendous amount of waste and damage until we began to, uh, this is again, getting the vision through the whole organization, not just to the leadership of the organization. Mm -hmm. Once the people in the warehouse realized the value and importance of what they were moving from mm -hmm. a truck into a warehouse, mm -hmm. they changed the way in which they were working 180 degrees, changed almost immediately because we looked really close at the issue and then we looked back about how we could fix that issue. Mm -hmm. So the smaller the organization, the faster that the entrepreneur has to move back and forth from a specific problem back to the general overview of the company and then back again and then back again. That's, uh, that's really important. Mm -hmm. The other thing was a, a very simple thing that a friend of mine taught me mm -hmm. years ago was a very simple way to make sure that you stay on top of your planning and execution. Mm -hmm. And the, that process is called 53120. Okay. Five hours a year, you focus on your planning for your company. Mm -hmm. Three hours a, mo a month, you focus on planning for your business and how it's doing based on the five hours you set before. Mm -hmm. And then once a month, you spend an hour on planning. Mm -hmm. So five for a year, three for a month, and then one for a week. Mm -hmm. And then 20 minutes every day, okay. you focus on how you're doing. So mm -hmm. that means that keeps that keeps your goal at the beginning of the year alive throughout the entire year, right mm -hmm. down to the same day you're working on. How mm -hmm. am I doing based on that? That's the difference between intention and reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's sort of the, the so those are the things. Um, oh, let me say one more thing about this. And this is something that took me a long time to learn is that increasing sales is not the solution to, to all problems. Correct. Um, Coming from a, I came from sales and marketing background as a lot of entrepreneurs come from a sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. So my solution always was sell more material. If we sold more material, we fix all the problems mm -hmm. until I started thinking financially, which is a dollar of sales creates two or three cents of profit. Mm -hmm. A dollar of cost cutting creates a dollar of profit. Absolutely. So where, where are you going to get the biggest change? So for entrepreneurs, especially to realize that Cutting costs is not a bad thing necessarily. Mm -hmm. You don't want to cut it to the point where you're hurting services or employees or that kind of thing. But mm -hmm. there's a lot of a lot of expenditures when you're just focusing on sales that don't need to be made. So That's pay attention to cost okay. cutting. Well said, well said. My next question to you, John, is uh, <clears throat> again, drawing upon your startup and entrepreneurship experience. What are the basic mistakes a lot of startup entrepreneurs make? Well, I, I had a young man I used I coached um, until I finally couldn't work with him mm -hmm. anymore. And I had to mm -hmm. fire a customer. It was not something I do very often. Mm -hmm. But the biggest problem was distraction from the founder. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it's this uh, attention deficit hyperactive disorder that mm -hmm. a lot of entrepreneurs have, which is which is great if you can do this visionary implementer thing. Mm -hmm. You know, when you sort mm -hmm. of 
My job is just to keep thinking about ways to make things better. And his job or her job is to make sure we implement them. Correct. And if you don't have that set up, a lot of times this visionary person just follows the the, the next bright, shiny thing in mm. front of them and goes wanders away. Mm. Uh, you know, you start out selling this and then this seems like a good idea. And then that seems like a good idea. And this seems, and what happens is you've, you've outrun your capital mm. before, before you really get anything started. So that's another component is to make sure that you have enough capital to sustain your business until you can reach a positive cash flow. Mm. Mm. You know, don't outpace your capital. That's, mm. that was really good. And, Make sure that you have a clear vision yeah, and that everyone in the organization understands that vision and mm -hmm. the steps they need to take to help make it become a reality mm -hmm. so that they feel a part of the growth, not just as an observer of the growth. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I'm now going to move to your book, uh, The okay. Daily Six. Okay. Um, before I ask you to tell me about your book, is it available on Amazon? Yes, it is. It's okay. available on Amazon. Um, uh, if it's a hardback, it's a used book because mm. we sold all, out all the hardbacks quite a while ago. And um, uh, Putnam only published so many hardbacks. And um, so now we have Amazon taking care of all the publishing and distribution. Mm. So we have we have an ebook, an audio book mm -hmm. and a paperback book. Okay. Um, they're all available on, and there are still some hardbacks available in good quality but they're all used books. Okay. Um, so yes, so uh, there's also- Tell, a, tell me about- Most all the sites are is available on most any book site. Perfect. So I'm, I'm going to ask all our viewers and listeners to go and check out John Chapel there <laughs> on Amazon and uh, have a look at the book. But uh, John, tell me about the book and what was your hypothesis when you wrote it? Well, my hypothesis was it was something that we talked about at the very beginning before the show started, which was gifts of devastation. Mm -hmm. And those are the gifts that you get that are that are <laughs> very painful and very negative that force positive changes into your life. Mm -hmm. Like like I said, the heart attack forces us into a low fat diet, mm -hmm. even though we could have gone on a low fat diet <laughs> without mm -hmm. the heart attack. Correct. Humans tend to only move forward when we have so much pain, it forces us to move forward. Okay. And that was the same thing for me. One of the companies that I started, I ignored everything I had learned and I mm -hmm. focused just on me. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, you know, be in charge, make a lot of money, <clears throat> you know, and I got disconnected from my family, my children, my wife. Um, and I was spending all my time at work, focused on work, focused on being on the A lists of mm -hmm. everything and being a, a big shot, trying to be a big shot. And so now I think my feeling is I'm a recovering big shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and so the daily six was what steps could I take mm -hmm. in my in my life as an entrepreneur or as a very busy person who in the past has been addicted to success? Mm -hmm. You know, let's just keep running forward more, more, more. And so that's the purpose of the daily six is to help create an emotional balance mm -hmm. in here mm -hmm. so that what's going on out here, you can fix it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have found that when I'm, you know, distracted and angry and, and, uh, you know, distraught over something, mm -hmm. uh, this doesn't work very well. You know, mm -hmm. what's going on out here the, the my team doesn't work well. My organization is dis yeah. discombobulated, but if I can focus on me first, <clears throat> make sure that I'm centered, make sure that I'm balanced. Then what happens is that's the, that's the vibe. If you want to use the uh, current word, that's the, that's the emotional mm -hmm. basis I give off and other people stay, stay calm. They stay, they stay centered. Mm -hmm. um, my literary agent was the, the first person. She read the book initially and she said, I don't really know what's going on here, but my whole office is working better. Mm -hmm. And the reason her office was working better was because she was working more peacefully, more centered, more balanced, and more things were getting accomplished. So mm -hmm. it's that, you know, speed up to slow down kind of thing we talked about earlier with the mm -hmm. Pickers and the Packers. It's also with the executive. Mm -hmm. If we can bring a sense of calm, focused direction to mm -hmm. everything that we do, mm -hmm. then everything will work more smoothly. And so that's the purpose behind the Daily Six. It's a mm -hmm. simple six-step process that you can practice daily to help keep you centered and balanced and create a path that takes intention into reality. Mm. And would you like to share the six steps? 
I would be happy to. Okay, do please do. Actually, I just accidentally happened to have a copy of the Daily oh, Six. Sure, here. yeah. Very and nice. the okay. six are the six are willingness because mm -hmm. willing. That's that's actually I have the. This okay. is my willingness bracelet. Every okay. client I have gets a willingness bracelet because mm -hmm. everything starts with willingness. Mm -hmm. If you aren't willing to try changes, if you aren't you and I were talking about reading books. If you're not yeah. willing to read a book, if you're mm -hmm. not willing to. It, it, you know, nothing starts, you know, mm. well, I, I'm going to go on a, I'm going to get healthier. Okay. Well, I'm not, but I'm not willing to eat mm. this. <laughs> I want to mm. exercise, but I'm not willing to take the time to exercise. So yeah. everything yeah. requires willingness to get started. Mm. The second component is quiet time, mm. which is in each morning <clears throat> and throughout the day, as you wish, mm. take at least a few minutes mm. to sit yourself in the right direction and and my belief is if you set your mind and your heart in the right direction, your life will follow. Mm -hmm. And so the idea behind quiet time is to create the willingness to start mm -hmm. the quiet time to set yourself on a path that will mm -hmm. lead you to the okay. place you want to get. Mm -hmm. The next component is service. And mm -hmm. it's a focus on the needs of others rather than simply my own. Mm -hmm. And again, like I said, as I focused on the success of others, after that sort of crash and burn, mm -hmm. as I began to focus on the success of others, the companies became much more profitable, much more successful, mm -hmm. and grew much more quickly mm -hmm. with much less stress when my focus was on service to others. Mm -hmm. The next component is really a twofer, which is love and forgiveness, okay. which is, um, uh, and I consider two sides of the same coin. And and me, I, you know, I'm, I'm not thinking about a romantic kind of love. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking about the need yeah. to care for other people. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it is, the way I define love in the book is understanding the needs of others and treating those needs as important as they were my own, mm -hmm. not more important and not less important. Mm -hmm. And I find when I'm working like with nurses and teachers, they think their their needs are much less important than the needs of others. Mm -hmm. And when I'm working with CEOs and leaders, they think their needs are much more important than other people. So mm -hmm. if we can just bring those back into balance mm -hmm. and realize we're just all humans here trying to get some work done. Yep. And if we can realize that they have needs and they have values and my, I do too, and we can learn to work together with those, then wow. it changes everything. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness um, allows us to stop carrying the baggage of the past into right. the present. Mm -hmm. uh, anger and judgments and resentments mm -hmm. that that were yesterday or the day before or the year before or five years ago, mm -hmm. let those go and focus on the needs of today. Mm -hmm. So love and forgiveness, gratitude for all things at all times, even the very difficult things. This is the the thing we talk about with entrepreneurs is mm -hmm. to deal with comfortable in dealing with things that fail mm. because we have to realize that failure is simply a stepping stone to success. Mm. And if we aren't grateful for the negative things that happen to our lives, then we will probably never reach the point we want to be. Mm. So being grateful for all things at all times, actually, especially for the difficult things, because those are the things that cause us to dig deep. When things are going great, it's easy. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's how do we deal with things when they're not going great? It's sort of learning to say, you know, I should find a way to be grateful for this exercise. I remember when, you know, we was talking earlier about having this business sort of crash and burn. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine came to me and said, you're a few years from now, you're going to be looking back on this and realizing this was really a great experience. Mm -hmm. And I, of course, thought he was at, crazy at the time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, now we're, well, even two years afterwards, I was realizing the changes were valuable. And now 25 years later, it's like, oh my gosh, if I hadn't had that happen, None of this would be, I'd still be buying and selling pencils or rubber bands or something and, mm. in, instead of being able to travel around the world and and really affect positive change in individuals. And, and I love doing that. Mm. It's much more valuable to me uh, in my sort of mission than, than selling and buying things ever was before. So that's the, and then the final one is, and, and this is, I think, what differentiates my book from a lot, which is action. Mm. Okay, now you've learned the first five. Mm. Now, what are you going to do? Mm. You have to do something to create the change. Okay. Everybody wants to be successful or be a good parent or be mm. a, okay, well, that's great. What are you doing to become that? Mm. Because the work is all in the becoming. So mm. you were talking about it. I mean, I talk to entrepreneurs, read a book every week, read a book every month, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, read three or four books a year, yeah. move forward, it, you know, be a better parent, then get some parenting advice. Mm -hmm. I advise, I advise um, uh, entrepreneurs to build a small 
uh, informal board of advisors, mm -hmm. you know, pull in your banker and your insurance person and yeah. your top salesperson and some other people and talk about what's going on and how things could get better. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes the entrepreneur feel very vulnerable, mm -hmm. but through that vulnerability will come a lot of strength and a lot of focus. Mm -hmm. So that's the six. We start with willingness yeah. and we end with action. So you have to start to be willing and you've got to take some steps forward to make anything. Mm -hmm. the, the other ideas are great. Love, yeah. forgiveness, mm -hmm. all these other things. Mm -hmm. But if you're not going to do it, then it's just simply a waste of your time. Amazing. Amazing. John, we've run out of time, but uh, thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank you for talking to me about your incredible journey, about uh, organizational wellness, about all your learnings as an entrepreneur. I must say, I don't know of too many people who successfully sold five businesses. <laughs> uh, congratulations on that. Thank you Thank for talking you. to me about the daily six um, and your six simple steps. And I know you've got a new book coming up. So we'll maybe have another conversation sometime about your new book, but good luck with your book. Thank you very much. Thank you again for speaking to me and good luck to you. Thank you, Ashtosh. I, I look forward to talking with you again and uh, stay well and stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website, www.tbcy.in, to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.